Yep, looks like everybody's here. Let's get the party started. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is Wednesday, May 15th, which means my live streaming event is tomorrow. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my co-host Taylor, we go on live for about an hour and a half, and we're taking requests from viewers like you, looking at stocks you want us to look at. Now, the truth of the matter is, if you're dropping your ticker during the show, I'm not going to be able to get to it because I announced this video earlier in the day. And when I do that, the comment box comes up and people just start dropping their tickers in early. And I do go by first come, first serve. So by the time four o'clock rolls around, I've already got seven or eight stocks that we got to look at. And that's really all I can look at in an hour and a half. And that's a pretty long show. So what I'm saying here is if you want your ticker looked at, don't drop it during the show. Drop it in the queue early, before 4 o'clock. Wherever you follow me, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, I will drop an announcement there around lunchtime. You can drop your ticker then. That'll get it in the queue, guaranteed. And it will give me more time to go over the information for you. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Thursday, every Thursday. So what I like to do on this show, folks, is share some personal due diligence with you on a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks every day. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on every single market. And because I'm making a video at the end of the day, I'm looking for a hot stock to share with you, a stock that has potential to make us money. And I got one for us. This is Fuel Cell Energy, ticker FCEL. Now, this is a hydrogen company. They produce hydrogen and other renewable energies. And I'm very excited about this company. And right now, there's a lot of good reasons to look at it. One of them is market sentiment. This last week, I've noticed a lot of hydrogen companies getting a lot of attention. And when I say attention, I mean money. I mean like the government, the DOE, is putting out millions and millions of dollars to hydrogen companies. Exxon is putting out millions and millions of dollars. This is what car companies were doing with lithium mining companies. But you know what, folks? I think lithium mining is going to end up being a bad investment. I think we're going to miss it. They didn't get it going fast enough. We've got all these lithium mines out there ready to help our EV transition, and yet none of them are mining. So now we're turning to hydrogen. And guess what? Hydrogen is cleaner all the way around. You don't have to recycle it. You don't have to rape the earth for it. And there's a lot more benefits to dealing with hydrogen than there is lithium. And I'm very excited to share this with you. Now, we're not looking at this stock because she had a hot chart. The chart's a little chaotic right now. She looks like she's trying to come up. I think market sentiment will help that. But when you see what she is involved with, you're going to understand that this is a stock you're going to want for a long hold. Now, I'm not saying she can't run in the short period, but this is definitely a stock I like from this point going forward. So FCEL, this is fuel cell energy. She finished today at about 85 and a half cents, and she was down today about 3%. Now, this is a penny stock. Well, this is going to be exchange. difficult She's on the and NASDAQ, NASDAQ my best which means you're easy. never going to have to pay to buy or sell your shares. You can also trade this pre-market, after-market. And let's face it, folks, it's just safer to be up on the major exchanges. There's a lot more rules and a lot more oversight up there. So what is fuel cell energy about? Fuel Cell Energy Inc. is involved in the design, manufacture, operation, and service of fuel cell power plants. Let's get a little deeper. Fuel Cell Energy Inc. is a global leader in sustainable clean energy technologies that address some of the world's most critical challenges around energy, safety, and global urbanization. It collectively holds 531 fuel cell technology patents in the United States and globally. As a leading global manufacturer of proprietary fuel cell technology platforms, Fuel Cell Energy is uniquely positioned to serve customers, including businesses, utilities, governments, and municipalities with sustainable products and solutions. The company's solutions are designed to enable a world empowered by clean energy, enhancing the quality of life for people around the globe. Now, we're going to jump on over here to their website which has a lot of information. Let me shrink that down. 
And we're not going to go through all of this, folks. There's a lot of science backing up what this company does. But I'm going to do my very best to keep this simple and generalize it. Now, it really isn't important how they do this. What's important is the end results. They have a process of capturing CO2 from big industrial companies, utility companies, uh, steel manufacturers, glass manufacturers. They grab all that smoke and smog coming up out of that stack, which has oxygen, nitrogen, and CO2 in it. And it has always been a problem separating these. Well, they have found a way to do this and not just get it done, but get it done with benefits, some mind boggling benefits. When they do this process, they get a lot of byproducts. And I'm talking about taking the CO2 that they captured and processing it. When they go to process it, they don't use any outside energy, no electricity or fire or anything like that. They kickstart it by using a little bit of methane and then the, the whole process starts. And what they end up creating is an innovative solution to help modernize the grid with decarbonized electricity. That's the first thing they create is electricity and they are not putting any CO2 emissions off doing this. And we're talking about electricity regularly, constantly, 24 seven. We're not waiting for the sun to shine. We're not waiting for the wind to blow. This is consistent. So you don't even need to connect to the grid. You're getting all the electricity you need right here. Also, in the process of cleaning out that CO2, they actually create hydrogen. Hydrogen energy that we're going to use in our fuel cells, in our vehicles for our transportation. These fuel cells that they're using generate a lot of heat. This could have been lost, but they have captured that heat and they're recycling it into the buildings to supplement our heating bills. And last but not least, another benefit of this, which was a byproduct they could have thrown away, is water. Fresh water. Now this impresses me, folks. Not only are they not tapping into the finite resource of the world with the waters we have, they're basically creating their own water by going through this process, but they're actually creating fresh, safe water that has no forever chemicals in it, that have no drugs in it because we've been flushing them down our toilets for decades. This is fresh, clean water. So the process of capturing all of this and then cleaning it produces hydrogen, water, heat, and low cost electricity that the company can use consistently. I mean, you talk about becoming self-reliant. Now the company's grabbing a lot of attention right now. They've got about a hundred of these facilities built around the world on three different continents. And they too are getting a lot of attention from big admirers like Exxon. And I'm going to share that information with you here in a minute. But right now, let's go take a look at the stock. If you want more information about the science and everything that they're doing, how it works, there's a lot of information on this site. Feel free to dive in. Let's go take a look at the relative volume now for the company. So let's get some information on this major exchange stock over here at the otcmarkets.com website. Ah, seems counterintuitive, doesn't it? Well, contrary to popular belief, this site doesn't just carry stocks from the OTC market. They carry every single stock on the market. How about that? So we are looking at the relative volume for fuel cell energy. Over the last 30 days, she's been roughing it at about 35 million, which really isn't under the radar. And today she did bump that up to about 37 and a half million. Sorry to see that extra volume going towards selling instead of buying. Share structure for fuel cell, yeah, it's kind of high. We got about a half a billion shares outstanding, 451 million. I don't know what the float is. They don't tell us. They don't tell us what the insiders own either. I could just subtract that from the outstanding share count and that would tell me the float. So all I know right now is that our float isn't going to be any higher than the outstanding share count. 451 is the maximum, he gets. And it won't be any lower than the criteria for the NASDAQ. Can't have any less than 1 million. So our float is somewhere between 1 million and 451 million. Market cap currently is just about 400 million. Taking a look at the financials, 
Well, their revenues have been growing over the last four years. They started here at about $70 million four years ago. We know that's millions because we've got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. By 2022, they had almost doubled that to 130 million. And we've just pulled back a little bit here at the end of 2023 with 123 million. The bad news is they have never made a profit these last four years. They're losing all kinds of money, millions and millions of dollars. Let's look at the quarterly, see if it's any better. Yeah, for one quarter, they made 5.2 million in one quarter, but all the other quarters were losing money. And they are losing revenues now too. They were up near 37, 38 million a year ago. Right now they're down to 16, 17 million dollars. Let's take a look at that balance sheet. Is it any better? Well, they've got money in the bank. We got about 303 million in the bank. And assets, woo, we've got almost a billion, 923 million. Liabilities, oh yeah, about 200 million, which means we've got positive stockholder equity in this company even though their revenues are horrible and they're losing a lot of money right now, they have solid stockholder equity of $663 million. That's great. We can fix the revenues. That's a temporary problem. Take a look at the disclosures. Right, we had a lot of disclosures over here. I went through all of these folks. We have a lot of Form 4s here. Form 4s you always want to look at. These are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's stock. Now they can do that in a lot of different ways. We as investors are primarily interested when they buy them or sell them. None of these are purchases or sales. They're compensation for uh, payment. They are restricted shares, things like that. Then we've got a bunch of 8Ks here and a couple of them were very important but they do correlate the news, so we're gonna look at the news rather than going into the filings. <laughs> the news has been very strange today. Every time I came to this page, it was empty, blank. I had no news here. So I did all my research and due diligence online. Well, just before I started to make the video, it popped up, which I'm glad I didn't see it earlier because there's a very important piece of news I'm gonna share with you that is not listed here. Now, there are two pieces of news here that caught my attention. One of them I want to share with you. We had one that came out April 11th. Fuel cell energy technology is to be used in a Sacramento wastewater biofuel clean energy project. That's just one more facility being built. Then the one I want to share with you came out on May 2nd. Fuel cell energy and Toyota celebrate the launch of the world's first Trigen production system at the port of Long Beach, California. So we're going to start there and then we'll move into the other piece of news that was not listed on the OTC. So this came out May 2nd. They tell us that Fuel Cell Energy and Toyota are celebrating the grand opening of the first of its kind Trigen system at the port of Long Beach, California. This is where all the imported Toyotas and Lexus come to from Japan. Trigen uses biogas to produce renewable electricity, renewable hydrogen, and usable water, and was built to support the vehicle processing and distributing center for Toyota at Long Beach. This is Toyota's largest North American vehicle processing facility, which receives approximately 200,000 vehicles a year. Thanks to the Fuel Cell Energy's Trigen platform, Toyota Lexus Long Beach is Toyota's first port vehicle processing facility powered by 100% on-site generated renewable electricity. They don't need any electricity from the city. They are giving themselves everything they need plus more. Now look at how they're using their resources. Their Trigen is producing 2.3 megawatts of renewable electricity. That is more than enough for them to use. And the excess electricity is being delivered to the local utility, that being Southern California Edison. But the Trigen also produces about 1,200 kilograms of hydrogen a day. A day, folks. So this is everything they need to fill up all the hydrogen cars that are coming in and all of their 18-wheelers. Self-reliant. And this was a kicker. I like this. 
The water byproduct of the hydrogen generation can produce up to 1,400 gallons of usable water per day. Per day. That's a lot of water, folks, which is being repurposed for car washing. You know, I think that's a great idea. They're not tapping into city water, finite supplies, wasting at washing all of these cars. They're creating their own water and wasting it to wash these cars. I think that is a tremendous idea. And this is just the first port in America that is 100% self-reliant on their own energy. And I think it's going to catch fire to other ports, other businesses. Now, the other piece of news is really big. This is about an extension to a contract with ExxonMobil. Fuel Cell has been dealing with ExxonMobil technology for 10 years, but the contract just ended and expired March of this year. So they have renewed it for another two years to the end of 2026. Fuel Cell Energy and ExxonMobil Technology and a third company, Mtech, have updated and extended a joint development agreement, a JDA, governing the company's development of this new technology that captures CO2 emissions directly from the industrial sources while producing electricity, hydrogen, water, heat, all simultaneously. As a result, access to the technology could be accelerated for commercial customers. Now, that's a very important sentence. What is going on here? With the help of Exxon, Fuel Cell is building a pilot project over in the Netherlands in Europe. This is being monitored by the Netherlands and by the EU. It has got their approval and everybody is watching it to see how well it works. Well, we know it works. There's about a hundred of them out there right now doing everything they're supposed to. So when this is successful, they tell us that the customer base that Exxon has over there in Europe, they're going to turn on to this. They are going to turn on the small to mid-scale opportunities, smaller businesses. This is a large-scale operation. And if it can work with a big company, it's going to work with the smaller companies. Now, they don't tell you here, but when you go over to the 8Ks, there's a lot of extra information about these deals over there. And one of the pieces of information was a paragraph that stated, when this contract expires and the two companies finally separate, all the business that is generated from this successful pilot program, and they start building more and more of them all over Europe for all these different companies and facilities, when Exxon steps away, all of those clients, all of those customers go to fuel cell. Fuel cell will not lose them. So between now and then, they have got this giant company, Exxon, supplying them customers that they're going to be helping implement this technology. And when Exxon steps away, it is going to be all fuel cells. That's exciting, folks. That's darn exciting. So I think hydrogen is where we're going. We're going to bypass lithium. EVs are going to become HVs. We are going to be using hydrogen for all sorts of things, not just our cars. And as you see, we're producing water, electricity, heat, all by cleaning the air, by capturing carbon, taking dirty laundry and processing it. And when we're all done, we have new clothes. This is magic, folks. This is magic technology, and I think it's going to be super duper hot. Even though the chart doesn't look all that great right now, I think now would be a good time to consider an entry. Let's go take a look at that chart. Now the best part of due diligence, the charting. We're going to chart FCEL, Fuel Cell Energy, on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. I've got this opened up to a one-day, one-year chart, and as you can clearly see, she has been in a downtrend the entire year. Not once did she ever break over that 200-day SMA. Now, it was back in June of last year, she had her 52-week high of $2.94. May 10th, just five days ago, we hit our 52-week low. It says here it's 64 cents, but looking at the other charts, it says 59 cents. Now, as you can see, over the 11 months past, it has been steady volume. But the last month has been crazy. The volume has exploded and is growing continuously with today having the most volume in a very, very long time. 
coming on down to that six month, four hour view. Now I've taken the opportunity here to draw in some supports and resistances for when we start to climb. She's already hit the bottom one here. This is at 99 cents and it is right at the 200 day SMA. Now she has been in a downtrend over the last six months, but we had a solid breakout attempt back here. She was at a dollar, went to a dollar 87 and then fell. And from there, she just couldn't hold herself up and came all the way down here. Now, when she came down, she fell to this strong support right here of 80 cents. She stayed on that for a while until she lost it and fell all the way down here, that 59 cents. Now, watch our 200-day SMA. She is in a strong downtrend right there. While we are down here, the price jumps up, comes over, and gets on top of the 200-day haul. You see it's purple when it falls, blue when it's climbing. It's starting to climb right now. When she got to the 200 haul, look at our 200 day SMA. It is just now starting to go flat. She took an opportunity to bounce off the 200 haul and go directly through all the other SMAs to and through the 200 day SMA. And you see penny stocks bounce off the 200 haul a lot to the 200 day SMA. With that successful tag, breaking this resistance and the 200 she came back down bounced off the 50 strong support came back up and she's right on top of her nine day sma at about 85 cents right now this is looking pretty decent folks our oscillators they seem to all be on pause they're up there in the hot zone but everything is going sideways right now like it stopped falling it's found that zone and now it's about ready to start climbing Let's see what that 20 day, one hour view looks like. Very interesting. So we are here at a dollar four. This is 20 days ago. She's in her downtrend. Now look, she came down to our 200 day haul, bounced on it once, bounced on it twice and went straight to the 200. But she cannot break out yet. The 200 is too steep. If she tries to get up on top of it, she's going to slip and fall. So she's poking her head up, just seeing what's going on. Took a dip here. Uh-oh, a dip. This looks like a crouch before a pounce. Please don't try to break out. She did. She pushed up and she tried to break out while it was still coming down. Our 200. You can't do that, folks. She'll slip and fall and fall deep. And that's what happened. She slipped when she tried to break out too early and fell all the way down here to this 59 cent low. She jumped up for one day. She worked her way over when she got to the 50. Look at our 200 day uh, SMA. It is completely flat right now. She took her opportunity immediately from way down here. She shot all the way up through the 200 through our next support up here at a dollar one coming back down bouncing on our 200 day SMA, which is what you expect. The first breakthrough is not the launch that is getting you up onto solid ground, but you got to jump on the solid ground a few times to make sure it's solid enough to build on. Once you realize that, then you start to grow again. All of our SMAs, the 200 haul, the 50 and the 20 are all working across that 200 day SMA and our 20 has already done it. Our oscillators, they're a bit cool right now. There was a lot of fall today, but you can see she leveled out and landed right on that 200 saying she wasn't going any deeper, but all of our oscillators are a little weak right now. But again, they're all stopping the fall and they're starting to go sideways like they're ready to start climbing. Take a look at our five day, five minute. Well, our trend has changed a couple times. Our 200 day SMA was falling hard. We took this strong dip, this crouch before she jumped up onto the 200, bounced on it a few times, found out it was strong enough to run off of, jumped way the heck up here, breaking through two supports resistances, coming back down to the 200 and bouncing on it and then lost it right at the bell. Boink, it fell down here and now she's going sideways. Now, to me and you on the five minute chart, this looks like it's dangling. There's not a support underneath it. There's no SMA underneath it, but we know that's not right. We were just looking at the 20 day 100 or the 20 day one hour. And you can see she is perfectly sitting 
on something. The 200-day SMA on our one-hour chart. So she is not floating over here. And what really stands out to me, again, is that 200-day haul. I'm telling you folks, penny stocks respect this and they use it as a launch board to get to the 200-day SMA for their breakouts. So she has crossed the 200-day haul, come down and bounced off at once, came up to her 50, she's riding that 50, and while she's doing that, what's happening to our 200 haul? It's changing direction. This is an important token sign that our price is probably gonna climb. When you see that 200 haul up underneath the price starting to turn up, watch the price start to climb. Now again, folks, I'm not looking at this stock for a big run tomorrow or this week. The chart is not hot. Things could happen. There's market sentiment right, right now around hydrogen. There's a lot of money being thrown at hydrogen. So there could be a pop just out of the clear blue, no news. You could just see this thing start to run. And then when news does start to come out, it could run some more and some more. I think this is a great long hold, folks, though it could surprise us in the short term as well. There's a lot of due diligence to be done here, folks. I didn't cover near all that they have, not even close. So please, do your own due diligence. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.